All right, so for this uh, instructional lesson, what we're going to be doing in AutoCAD is taking our Koi Pond sample here, and what we want to do is we want actually want to put it on a page complete with title block and have it also scaled with a uh, working drawing filled with different measurements and stuff like that. So the very first thing that I want to do at this point is make sure that I finish everything off, and if you're not finished, no big deal. You always come back to it a little bit later on. Uh, and from there, I'm going to select from my list of layers, uh, Viewport Layer. Now from here what I plan to do is if you notice I'm selected on the model so anytime I'm a model I'm kind of on this blueprint view where I can pretty much add things, edit, delete and so on and so forth. Now when I click on the layout tab right over here this is what it's going to actually look like if I print it off. So it's okay but obviously I need to actually um, grab a bunch of things and add certain things like measurements and title block like I stated earlier. Now I want you to have a look right over here. Um, you'll notice that this outside magenta color is my viewport. So what I need to do is I need to actually take this viewport and move this by clicking on it and grabbing the grips. And the reason why I'm doing this simply is to have a little bit of room below so I can actually have my title block. Now one important thing to remember is do not go past these dotted lines because if you do it's not going to print. So I'm just going to actually just fall short of it. And now you'll actually see that I have some room where I can actually incorporate into my title block. I'm just going to zoom out just a touch here. And I'll pan. There we go. Now from here what I want to do is I want to change from my viewport layer to my title block. So for, with my title block, uh, I'm going to take my drawing tools and I'm just going to make a very, very simple standard title block right below here. Whoops, before I do that, actually I should probably not select my title or my viewport here. So I'm just going to hit Control Z. Alright, so I've undone done this and I want to deselect my viewport here first. And now I can select my title block. And from here, I'm just going to take my drawing tools and I'm just going to go and just make a rectangle uh, divided right in the middle so I have equal quarters. Oh, I'm just going to just change my snaps here and make sure that I got midpoint selected. There we go. Now it'll perfectly find itself in the middle. And I'll just repeat that line. If you recall, the basic building blocks of a title block are always going to be the name, the date, the scale, and the title. So using my text tool, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just click and drag here. And I'm not worried about the spacing or the size at this point. And so I'm just going to type in Koi Pond in all capital letters, just an architectural standard. Close the editor. Take my text tool again. I'm going to just type in my name in all capital letters. As far as the uh, date goes, today's date happens to be April 18th, 2018. Actually, I'll take the TH out. Don't need it. And then last but not least is the scale. Now, I'm with the scale, I don't know what the scale is as of yet, so I'm just going to type in scale colon and just leave it and revisit this afterwards. All right, just as an architectural uh, convention, at the same time, what I actually have to do is I have to make sure that my text is a quarter of an inch and everything else is an eighth of an inch. So I'm gonna, I know that these are a quarter of an inch from my uh, default settings with the text. So I'm just going to select this, this, and this, and I'm going to scale this to 0 0.5, the size, and what that will do is it will make my text one-eighth instead of a quarter of an inch. So obviously one-eighth is half of a quarter. So let's go scale. I'll select my base point. And I'm just going to type in 0.5 as a numeric value so I can control the size. Perfect. So from here, what I'm just going to do is just grab each of these and just position them somewhat in the middle. And that's just bouncing around, but I'm not too worried about that right now. Whoops. That, I'm not too sure what happened there. That just went kind of flying across, and of course the title. All right, so that's the first part down, uh, and also finished. So the next thing I actually have to do is I actually have to create uh, or put in dimensions in here and scale this all out so it's scaled properly. Now this part gets a little confusing, but it's really important for you to remember. Right now we're in paper space, so paper space means that everything on the page outside of the uh, viewports, and of course this is the viewports. 
So this is paper space and I always do my title block in that paper space. Now what I plan to do is just deselect here and I'm just going to go from paper and click on this and now I'm in model. So anything that I do is going to be inside the viewport itself. So for example, if I zoom in, the page is not zooming in and out. This model is. And you'll notice that I have kind of a weird decimal number for a scale which I need to change. So what I'm going to do is look at my scale here and I want all the um, uh, imperial scales just because we're doing everything in feet and inches for now. So I'm going to select the scale 330 seconds of, uh, or sorry, 330 seconds of an inch is equal to a foot in real life, and I'm going to click on that and see how that works. Okay, way too small, so I got to go bigger than that. So the next scale I'm going to try is one eighth of an inch is equal to a foot. See how that works out. Okay, not bad. I can still use my page a little bit better. So let's go one step higher. We're going to go three sixteenths of an inch is equal to a foot in real life. Okay, that's way, way better. And I'm just going to center this. And before I do anything, this part is really important. Is there a little window or a little lock right over here? I want to lock this. Because, for example, if I use my uh, zoom, I've just destroyed my scale. And you'll notice it kind of goes back to that weird, de weird decimal number. So again, I'm going to go to 3 sixteenths of an inch is equal to a foot. And now what I want to do is I want to lock this. So if I do use my scrolling wheel, it'll just affect the page and not the actual viewport itself. Okay, so that's the first part. Now I could go ahead and add dimensions if I want to, but I actually want to create a style first. Now I want you to think of a style basically as a way of writing something down. So you know that there's cursive and there's printing and there's different forms of printing as well, such as block printing or calligraphy and whatnot. So kind of the style is the same sort of thing. Now what I want to do before I actually start adding those dimensions is actually create my own style or how the uh, numbers or annotations are going to actually look. So from my ribbon system right over here, I'm on the default home ribbon, and I'm going to change to annotate. And from the annotate, I'm going to look to dimensions right over here. And there's a small little arrow. A little hard to see. I'm not too sure why uh, the makers of AutoCAD do that, but whatever. I'm going to click on that, and here we have our dimension style manager. So what I want to do is I want to create a new dimension. And you can call this anything that you want. I'm just going to call it my style. So I'm just going to take out the cap locks here. And what I definitely want to do here is I want to click on where it says annotate up. This is super important that you click on this because if you don't, what's going to happen is your text uh, or your writing or numbers are going to be basically scaled down so they're like really small and hard to see. So once I've got that, I'm going to click on continue. And then I have the uh, style sheet come up over here. Now, um, this is a preview of what it's going to look like. And so we've got to change a few things. Now, the very first thing I'm going to change is I've got to change the uh, symbols and arrows. And I want to change it to an architectural tick because we're doing an architectural drawing. If we're doing something mechanical or industrial, we'd probably use a closed fill. But let's just go with an architectural tick for now. So that's the first part. Now, the next is the text. So the, no the way that the numbers are going to come out, we want to be 1 8th of an inch. Rather than delete all of this, I'm just going to replace the numbers of the values. So not 1 16th or 3 16th but one eighth of an inch, just like that. All right, and then next is my primary units. I want my primary units to be architectural, and I'm gonna put a precision of a quarter of an inch, and you can see how things get automatically updated in here, and that's awesome. So I'm gonna click on okay. I've just created my style, and while the style is highlighted, I wanna go set current because it's the style that we're gonna use. All right, now I'm just gonna close that off. All right, so I'm still in model. I want to do my dimensions in here. And when I do my dimensions, the very first thing before I do that is selecting a different layer. Because when you're working in a layer environment, you obviously want to have everything all sort of on its own separate layers so you can uh, do quick edits to it and quick changes and it's all color coded. So I'm just going to go dimensions. All right, so going back into annotate, you'll notice that this program does an absolutely wonderful job of annotating very quickly and easy. So I got 40 feet this way, I've got 30 feet this way, and I'm going to continue to go ahead and dimension extensively all building aspects of this particular koi pond. And that's exactly what a, uh, a working drawing is, is where you have detailed measurements so it can actually be built by a contractor or engineer. Uh, what I can also do too under my dimensions is I can uh, go ahead and rather than get a linear dimension, I can actually see arc lengths. So I can actually look up my koi pond itself and I can actually get an arc length on that too. And I can do the same for radiuses of circles too. So let's go to radius, find my circle, and it actually gives me a radius. So go ahead and extensively dimension this. And we're almost finished at this point except for one important thing is we have to actually add our scale. Now we know our scale is 3 16ths of an inch is equal to a foot. Now we have to add that 
And if you recall, we no longer want to be in the model space, but we actually have to go to paper. Because if you recall, paper is everything actually outside of the viewport itself. So I'm going to double click on my scale, set my cursor right over here, and I'm going to go 3 sixteenths of an inch. And it automatically puts into a fraction, which is quite nice, is equal to 1 apostrophe dash 0 quotations or 1 foot zero inches and I'll just hit close the text editor now I gotta obviously kinda jig this around and play with this so it's actually on the same line and but I'll let you figure that out in the meantime alright so that's how you pretty much add uh, a title block uh, dimensions and also scale your image